Hi, I'm Peter Brackett, head chef at Horticulture Newcastle. I'm here to do the video tutorial for the Earth, Land and Sea Porty at Home Week 2. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unpack everything from the bag. So we're just going to open it up. It's pretty useful now to have a pair of scissors and a, a little container. Um, we try our hardest to make as much of the stuff recyclable, compostable, stuff like that. You'll see as we go along. So the first thing that we're going to put out is the brown paper bag. That's got your flatbreads in it and uh, pack it with some whip beets. I'm going to pull out another two little pint bags, uh, 10.0 and 10.1. I want you to stick 10.0 straight in the fridge because that's the chocolate for later on and we don't want that to get too warm so we'll just pop that straight into the fridge for later on. There will be a video to show you how to do the dessert as well. Then you're going to pull out these little tubs. You should have eight little tubs. Then you should have three, three little dressings in little bags like this. Two foil containers. And then one box in here. So in here there should be first thing some sea green fillets. A lamb rump, bag with uh, the curry in it, and a tin foil wrap with the sweet corn in it. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to carry on open up some of these things. So we're going to open up the sea green. Uh, I've got a tray ready to drain on just here with a J-Cock. You can use a bit of kitchen roll, something like that. So we're just going to pop pop this down onto here like so and then we're going to pop this cloth on the top of it and just press it quickly wash our hands because we've touched raw fish right so the next thing we're going to do is uh open up the the coil which says 3.0 on it and there you'll have the tomatoes Pop that into a bowl. And we're just going to stick a little bit of sea salt. Good pinch of sea salt. Pinch of crushed black pepper. And a splash of vinegar. I'm using white wine vinegar. So you can use any vinegar. Malt vinegar is really nice on it. Balsamic. Just give it a little move around. So you've got that in the bowl. Put that to the side. We'll not worry about that for a little bit. Next, you're going to take the lid off. 8.1 so in here you've got your little med bed garnish you find one of the little packets dressing which says 8.2 this is a uh, confit garlic and rosemary oil so just take the corner off that we're going to pop that onto the med veg all over it again with a good pinch of sea salt leave that there that's ready to go in the oven in a little bit Going to open up the curry, which is 4.0. We're going to pop that into a little saucepan. Try to get as much of it out as you want. You don't want to waste any of it there, even it in the packet. Pop that over next to the heat. You see, I've also got a, a larger pan of, uh, there's just water in there, nothing else. We're gonna bring that up to the boil. For We'll use that to warm the lamb up in a little bit. Sorry, grab a little ramekin and 1.0, which is the holy dressing. You wanna open that up and put that into the little ramekin. We are then going to um, go and paint up the whip beets now as well because again that's something that we can get out the way nice and early. We don't have to worry about it so much later on. So we've got a bowl and a large plate. So just snip the end off the whip beet like so. And then we want to 
put it into the middle of the plate. So this is um, cooked beetroots uh, with a little bit of pomegranate molasses and vinegar in it and we just uh, blitz it up so it's real nice and smooth. Then just using a spoon, just push it around, spread it out with all the edges. If you look on the pots, there should be one which says 2.1. This is the savory granola. So you've got spelt, crispy chickpeas, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, coriander seeds, and linseeds with some paprika and curried spices. I'm just going to spread that all around like so. Then we have the Brown paper bag in here, you've got your flatbread. Um, with these, you can do what you like. Uh, some people want them a bit warmed up, some people grill them. I like them cold, um, and I just rip them up and eat like that, but you can cut them up if you wanted to. So just pop them on the plate with your whip beets, and we'll pop that to the side somewhere safe for now. So if you're at this stage, uh, you're ready to cook. If you're not, let's just, uh, Pause the video and catch up to it and we'll uh, we'll get on with the cooking in a second. So now that we're all set up ready to cook, what we're going to do is we're going to take 10.2, 10.1. That's just for the desserts. We don't need those just yet. So we'll just pop them to the side. Um, then we're going to take the foil wrap 5.0, which is the, the corn on the cob and the lamb 9.0. We're going to drop the lamb into the water, which is boiling, and then turn the heat straight off, move it to the side. Uh, the idea is that that's going to warm through the lamb without cooking through it too much and we're going to pop the corn on the cob into the oven on a preheated tray so that's at 180 degrees and we'll set a timer for five minutes so um if you just hit pause on the video now and we'll come back in five minutes and we'll do the next stage right so our corn on the cob's been in the oven for five minutes and the lamb's been in the water for five minutes we're just going to pull the corn on the cob out with, from the tray like so we're just going to uh, unwrap it. We want to get it nice and stiff flavour. Just be careful because it will be a bit warm. We so just unwrap it. You want to keep all the juices that come out of it. They're on the same tray, just stick the, the med veg on there. And we're going to pop those back into the oven. Uh, another five minutes for that. Still at 180 degrees. So a five minute timer. Then we're going to pop the curry on. So we're just going to do it on a, a low temperature. We're just getting a little bit of heat into it for the moment. We don't over reduce it. If it is starting to over reduce, we tend to keep a little pot of water or a little bottle of water next to it. So we can just add a little bit of water into it to stop it from burning. Now we're going to uh, start plating the tomatoes. So there should be lots of lovely juice starting to come out of the tomatoes. So we'll grab a metal bowl and a spoon. Now there's some big slices of it. These are ox heart tomatoes. So we'll start by layering those up on the bottom. tomatoes are actually uh, British grown, they're grown in the Isle of Wight, they're a really really fantastic product. So once that looks like that we'll just pop that over to the side for now so we're safe and we'll finish that off later on. Just making sure that the curry is warm through. You've still got the lamb in the water at this point. When the timer goes off in the oven we're going to pull it out of the bag. You just start to see the curry starting to change colour a little bit, darken, loosen up as the warmth gets into it. Um, important as well, just um, at every stage that you're doing this, I purposely left the seasoning quite light, salt and pepper, because everyone's palates are different. So taste things as you go and add a little bit of salt if you want a little bit of salt. So you know how you like things more than we do. So, um, <coughs> We're going to now take the sunflower and lowered pesto, which is 3.1, and we're going to find a pot 
which says 3.2 on it. We're going to slip the bag open. And in the bowl, which has got all your juices from your tomatoes in there, we're going to add the pesto to that. Get as much of it out as you can. And then in the pot, which says 3.2, in here you've got some semi-dried tomatoes, some, some chopped lovage, some pumpkin seeds, and some sunflower seeds. You just want to put that into the bowl for now. Give it a good mix around. And then we're going to just dress the uh, tomato salad with all this here. So just make sure you get all around there. Get a good spread of it, make sure it's all seasoned up nicely. So that's your, that's your tomato salad finished, ready to go for later on. Um, it can just stay like that, it's cold, so it means you've got one less thing to worry about when it's hot. You should see you have a couple of minutes left on the timer in the oven now. The curry's just starting to come up into temperature. Uh, what we're going to do in a minute is take the, the lamb out of the pan and we're going to put it into the oven tray. Uh, I'll show you one second. So be really careful with this, you don't want to burn your fingers, use a pair of uh, tongs or spoons to get it out of the water. And just take the bag. So you want to keep all those juices that are in the bag there. Now um, I'm putting it on the same tray as the sweet corn. If you are um, sharing the meal as one person who's pescatarian and one person, obviously you just use a different tray, but it doesn't really make too much difference. So just pop that fat side down onto the tray and just dribble all this stuff around it. And we're going to put the timer on for another five minutes once the lamb's in the oven. So um, if you're at that stage there, uh, just hit pause. Uh, keep an eye on your curry. Make sure that that doesn't overreduce, but hit pause and we'll finish off in a minute. So that's the timer going off on the five minute timer now. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the timer off and we're going to put the oven on a really low temperature, 120 degrees. We're not looking to cook anything further, just keep it warm. Um, your oven might retain heat really well, just turn it off if that's the case. Um, but yeah, we're going to leave that in there for a few minutes. Uh, in that time, you've probably pulled your curry off the heat as well. So we pulled that off the heat by the time it's gone off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the fish. So we're going to uh, fry the fish. So we've had that dry, dry nicely. The first stage of this is to get some table salt and get a really good layer of salt on the skin. This helps create a little barrier between the pan and the fish skin. So it helps stop it from sticking. Now there's loads of different ways to cook a piece of fish. I personally prefer to um, go from cold in the pan. It's, Gives you a little bit more room for mistakes it stops it from curling up and i think you get a really nice crispy skin so we're going to put a decent layer of oil into the pan looking about a millimeter deep and then we're going to place the fish skin side down into the pan there we go and we're just going to bring that over and we're going to put that on a high heat and um, as that's starting there we're also going to look at the, the little pots that we've got left over so i want you to find 9.1 9.2 and 4.2 uh, these are all going to go into the microwave in a minute uh, so you've got the quinoa for the lamb you've got the aubergine puree for the lamb which was 9.1 and 9.2 and you've got 4.2 which is the rice for the curry so the fish, the fish will be starting to just go a little bit there um, the really important thing to do is to not touch it right now not move it because um, it will still be a little bit sticky it's only once that the crust really the skin's gone really crispy that you'll be able to move it around so just leave it don't worry about it you put the salt in the skin it'll be super lovely um, we're just going to slide the curry back on a little bit of heat here as well. 
And then while that's happening, we're going to pull our tray out the oven and start setting up our plates. So out the oven, we have our tray with our sweet corn, our med bed and our lamp. Be careful because it is hot. And then pop in the quinoa, the rice and the, the, the aubergine puree into the microwave. I don't have a microwave, so you're going to have to use your imagination. But you're probably looking when you put the three things in, about a minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, you know you might create it's steaming nice and hard, just make sure that it's uh, warm through but thoroughly. And we're going to bring our plates down. So we grab our two bowls and our two small plates. Just if you want to come have a look at the fish now, you can see around the edges it's starting to form a nice crust and the fish is starting to keep chewing. We want to wait until it's cooked almost all the way through and there's only a little bit of the raw flesh left. So, right about now as well, your uh, your purees and stuff like that should be warm in the microwave. So we'll bring those over. We're going to start with the uh, rice into a bowl. One half a bowl like that. Obviously yours will be nice and steaming and hot. And then we're going to take the, the aubergine puree. I just moved the fish off the heat there. And we're going to have the aubergine puree onto a plate. Just put it into the centre of the plate and we're going to use the back of the spoon, like so. So with the fish off the heat, what we're going to do is we're going to flip the fish over off the heat. So if you just get your, a fish slice in underneath like that, just flip it over nice and gently. Fish cooking chew on the skin. Take the quinoa, you might want to use a spoon for this one. Pop it on your aubergine puree. Just on one side of it, like so. And your med bed onto a bowl. So, in here, we've got some compi garlic, tomatoes, peppers, courgette. So our curry is nice and warm, our fish will be finished off on the other side now. Put the fish onto the med veg like so. Our sweet corn onto a plate. Then we're going to quickly put the curry onto the other side where the rice is. And the lamb, we're just going to carve it into nice thin slices. So you can see it should be still lovely and pink in the middle, really, really juicy. If you want it well done, then obviously you would just leave it in the oven for a little bit longer, or you could fry it off or something like that. So pop the lamb on there. Then we've got two pots left 4.1, 5.1. 5.1 is the ducker, so you want this to go all up and around the sweet corn. 4.1 is the curry garnish. You've got puff wild rice, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seed, chopped coriander. All over there. And then we're going to finish with the hoardy dressing. A little bit onto the fish. A little bit onto the lamb. And a little bit onto the sweet corn. And we have our tomato salad that we did earlier on and our whipped beets with sourdough flatbread. So that is 40 at home, week two, land, earth and sea.